see Louisiana as being in survival mode all the time. It, it, the, when the Cajuns were dropped off here and, and left to die in the swamp, they've entered survival mode. The state's been inaccessible for the, the most part until the 20th century when we were able to put roads to connect the communities. And the culture, though, is still in survival mode. And then every four or five years, something bad happens. Katrina came and wiped us out five years ago. Gustav wiped out Baton Rouge. Then people get back in the survival mode. They're not in the thrive mode. And how do you, how do you take a culture that's based on survival and getting through the bad times and getting through the bad times when everybody's getting through the bad times and no one's thinking about what do we have to do today to make sure we have good times? Well, I th the problem is that we're all looking for the quick fix. Uh, a legislator, a statewide official gets elected and says, boy, just get me through the next four years. You know, I got to bring home the bacon and do some things that look good now so I can get reelected. I've never seen a governor in my time going back to the 60s. Uh, John McKithen to some degree did this, but very few people, no other governor has done this thing. Look, I know I got to get through the next election cycle, but we can't solve these problems in one year, two years, or four years. We've got to lay out a master plan that's going to take Louisiana 25, 30 years down the line. What do we want our, our educational system be, to be like at the time? What kind of infrastructure do we want? Let's start laying out a scenario in steps for the next 25 years. No governor's ever done that. When I uh, graduated from the University of North Carolina, my commencement speaker was Terry Sanford, the governor up there, and, he, and this is what he said. Look. I'm probably going to get beat this time around, but I'm going to lay out a game plan to change the focus of education higher in elementary for the next, it's going to take me 20 years. Took him 30 years to do it. Took him 30 years, the state 30 years, but now they are heads and shoulders above us here in Louisiana. At every level you rank, they're way beyond us. So we just think through the next election. Now, now to do that though, you got to kind of suck it up for four or five years because we don't have the resources. Or do we have the courage and the concern about our children and grandchildren to say, we're going to pull ourselves in, we're going to reduce our spending, we're going to hang in there for a few years while we lay out this long-term scenario to start building a foundation for our future. If we'll do that, we can get out of this rut. If we don't do it, we're going to be in the survival mode that you referred to, and it's going to take a very gutsy, courageous governor to take on a challenge like that. How does the actual legislative process differ from what the public thinks the legislative <coughs> process is? Well, the, the, the public doesn't have a lot of faith. You know, the, the great saying is, look, uh, uh, let's just, you know, when the legislators, legislators in session, hold on to your, your pocketbook, you know, and, the, uh, and I'm not sure we need a legislature in, in meeting for three months out of the year, and then they have these, these hearings that go on day after day, week after week. There's too much government. Whether it's good or bad, there's too much government. We don't need the legislature meeting that long. Give the governor the basic direction, the money he needs, set the priorities, and come on back home. And Same thing in Washington, D.C. These fellows and ladies have made this a full-time profession. I think the public, uh, and we've seen this in poll after poll, are, uh, uh, are, not, are very down on the, the whole legislative process. Uh, uh, the legislature is very unpopular, just like the Congress is very unpopular. Uh, as far as the nuts and bolts, that there's not much of it. It's a mystical kind of thing. There's not a lot of understanding. You know, we don't have a very open system right now. We have regressed dramatically in terms of, of public government, open meetings, uh, opening up the process. Uh, the governor's office is basically very secretive in everything they do. Uh, if you ask for documents, uh, even if, if, you're, if you're entitled to get them from the press, what should take you a day takes you three or four months and you've got to threaten to sue. So we don't have a, a, an open process where the public really understands what happens. I think that's a mistake. Lay out your warts, let them see the process. You know, put the put tr jury trials on television. We all ought to have a cable channel where you can watch it. We got Judge Brown and all these other judges on we see all the time. I'd like to see the, the Louisiana Supreme Court, the federal courts, uh, on all these high pro tr uh, profile trials. Let the public, so they understand the process more. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And we don't do that. We keep this very secret. The public uh, is... Uh, is uh, 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 I think they feel like there's a lot of deception going on, but they don't really understand the nuts and bolts. Now, having said that, the nuts and bolts work about like they do in most other states. You know, you've got uh, bureaucrats that have been there for 30 years that kind of run the process. I think in terms of the process actually running, 
uh, it works about as well as you could expect. It's just that we don't need them to be there that long. We don't need legislators meeting around the clock and the big the stink over the pay raise here. Well, you know, we're full-time legislators. We don't need a full-time legislature. We don't need a full-time Congress in Washington, D.C. That's what you have the appointed officials and the statewide officials. You give them this authority. And so we've just got too much government going on.